I'm going to try to, to give you a general overview of our division and um, explain why it is a little bit different or slightly different from the other ones that you haven't seen this morning. We have our project, uh, it's called a Sustainable Path to Methane Conversion by Advanced Electrochemical Technologies. It's based at uh, Instituto de Pesquisas Energéticas e Nucleares, this is Nuclear and Energy Research Institute. We call it IPEN. And we, are, we have an associated institution, which is the Federal University of ABC. So I want to give you a brief context um, where, where we are and what we want. We are indeed in, uh, in this scenario of the project, so sort of making the transition from today's needs and today's scenario of our energy mix towards what we expect in the future, committed to the Paris Agreement in order to restrict the temperature increase to about 1.52 degrees Celsius. So in this scenario, we are not like the other divisions producing energy, but we, we actually are going to use uh, the energy, which is according to the scenarios, to the future scenarios, they are supposed to be affordable, available, and coming from renewable sources, such as photovoltaics as wind. So energy for us is kind of an ingredient that we can use for doing our reactions. And the other ingredient, main one actually, is the natural gas, being its main component, methane. So there is a large infrastructure and there are a lot of natural gas, a lot of stranded reserves. So in order to use that, instead of just burning it and getting the calorific power of this component, can we make something else out of it? And we are even allowed to use some energy. And that's our the context. But, so we start with methane and our projects focused in trying to get higher value products when we started this project, two main components came up. One of them is methanol, the other one is ethylene, but also hydrogen could be thought of sort of bringing methane, but this is not our focus. So we want to use those materials here either as building blocks for chemical industry or as a fuel for transportation or storage easier than a gas. Um, and we've been thinking a lot about those reactions. They are very difficult. And if you think about the ingredients that we have, we have methane, we always have oxygen in the atmosphere, we have water a lot of times and hydrogen. So I was thinking we are basically creating life here, you know? And then I remember this classical iconic experiment such as the miller Urey back to the 50s in Chicago University, where they actually have basically the same ingredients so if eventually we fail to create higher product chemicals, we maybe create a little bit of life. So we, we are based at Epeng, and uh, we are a fuel cell center. Our origin, to explain you all where, where we came from, because this project for us is kind of a new start. Uh, it's a fresh research for us. We are not doing methane conversion um, in our labs to this. Um, where we started. So we are basically a fuel cell project uh, department at this research institute. It's a federal institute inside the campus of Sao Paulo State University in Sao Paulo. And what we do there, we do basic material science, we do basic electrochemistry, synthesize nanomaterials, we characterize them, and we put them into devices. And uh, well, there was a time that we were even scaling up and producing power out of those fuel cells. Um, but we also have a, a strategic um, niche for our research here. We were deeply based into having or obtaining or using um, ethanol as a renewable source of hydrogen. So we also have some activities in purification, gas purification, um, steam reforming of ethanol, producing hydrogen. And, uh, and what is also very important, a very important part of our division, which is one of the impacts that I, that I foresee for us, 
very important here in Brazil, it's education. So with students are a very important um, product of our um, division, our team. Um, so in our labs, we are 10 uh, permanent people working there. Four of us are principal investigators. We are associated to the university. So our students are students of Sao Paulo State University. At this moment, we have about 30 students, all the way from undergrads to postdocs. Uh, at this moment, along with CINI, you have two other main projects. We have a thematic FAPESP project on ethanol fuel cells, and we are part of the other engineering research center, RCGI, and we we're, were still using natural gas, and then we burn it electrochemically, but we burn it in fuel cells. So those are our three main projects. And in the last five years, those four PIs, they were producing uh, more or less those numbers. We have five patents, and we had a lot of students coming out of our labs as well. Um, but our division, our division is composed from Project 10 to Project 15. Um, they have always a co-PI, a coordinator of each one of them, some assistant investigator as well, and most of them, they are part of an international network of collaborators. Those are people that have been collaborator, collaborating with us in different topics, but they are long-term partners of those researchers, and we brought them together in our division in order to expand our capacities and to have, um, well, to contribute with our project. Uh, we are organized like a small replica of the hub. So we have our six projects. We have a, a kind of a local executive committee as well, where the PI and all the co-PIs taking together most of the decisions regarding the division. And uh, we have the support of uh, the innovation office and the project management office at EPEN. Some people that are already joined the team to help us with the everyday life can be a very tough um, job here in Brazil, very bureaucratic, to make the interactions between the foundations and the research. So that's how we organize ourselves. And those are our, pro our Professor Hubens already made a spoiler of my slide, but um, so that's what we see. We see our ingredients, we have methane and we have electricity, and we have two families of projects. So on the left side of the, uh, left column here, we have what we call the low temperature projects, and to the right side we have the high temperature projects. Um, I'm going to give you some highlights about them, like this project 10, which is based on um, mixed composite ionic conductors. So we put together two families of materials. One is able to conduct oxygen ion in one direction. The other one can conduct carbonate ions to the other direction. And we want to use this at high temperature in order to separate gas mixtures. So this would be a very interesting um, device because natural gas here in Brazil has a composition which is about the same of biogas. We have a large amount of CO2 coming together with methane, about 40%. So if you want to we'll use that, it will be very interesting. To, to first start with a clean stream of methane. So with this kind of materials, we could have a molecular selectivity towards carbonates. So this is one project. The other project is very interesting. It's pretty much similar to what Division of Advanced Energy Carriers is doing. So we were basically coupling water splitting, but with the other catalytic reactions in order to couple um, and form higher order carbonates out of methane. Very challenging research, very difficult reactions like all this, because you're in all in those projects, we are basically forming molecules that are less stable than our main ingredient, methane. So that's why we, we have to think and be, it's a very difficult task. And we have other, using, um, the same technology of proton exchange membranes, we want to develop both electrodes, electrocatalysts, but also electrolytes. One of our projects is um, based on development of carbonate ion conductor membranes. So there is a lot of organic chemistry and development of ionic conductors, polymer based those conductors. And we have most equivalent ones, which is making the same reactions with ceramics reactors running at 800 or so, which is a favorite temperature from methane decomposition. So our projects are more or less in this 
topics. And uh, what I want to show you, what's been the progress and some of our results and what we've been doing now. Um, during this time I was um, preparing my presentation, I decided to check what was the slide that Professor Hubens asked for me to present at the Joint Steering Committee last October. So I took a look on this and I said like, M to P division is organizing itself, it's putting together people, hiring people, and we had the FAPESP project operational. That was in October last year. And then he asked me the same slide for this new meeting happening tomorrow. And uh, well, we basically finished the FAPESP um, importations, we are preparing our labs, and there's something very interesting here that I'm going to tell you the details. We, are the, we have a sprint project, which is a FAPESP special uh, project for collaboration exchange of research with some other universities abroad. So there's been a lot of work in order to get to the one slide to the next slide. And uh, actually, there has been a lot of work since December 2017. With the, there was the official announcement of this call. And, um, we had the announcement and it was only in August that we had the official launch of the center and it was only in October that it was like fully operational. So through this time we had a lot of accomplishments. We, we came up with the name of the center. It was a contest that we've made. Um, there was many, many things that we started thinking and defining. So organizing the whole center, it, it was a lot of work and we have been contributing to that. So we already organized three events with this one here in like six months. So, and this is a picture that this is, illustrates uh, pretty well what is the, the stage of our uh, achievements at this point. This is our lab last week. We just received a lot of gas analysis systems here from Ageland. They are very happy with us, but now they have to set up all those boxes. We have all the gas line is already installed in this lab. And uh, well, we in this last four months, we were able to to spend 9% of our budget at FAPESP with our multi-user equipment. There was a lot of work to get that. All the equipments are waiting for shipment or being shipped at this point. So lab preparation is it's running well. At this point we have uh, some labs already waiting just for the final equipment. Some of them are waiting for gas lines to be concluded, but things are running. Some of the pictures, um, both at EPEN and UFABC, we need to adequate our labs for those new experiments. And what about the science? What's been going on with methane conversion? If you look to the, we made like a very quick um, meta-analysis. So the number of papers of methane conversion is, is still increasing. It's interesting. So we, we assume it is a very, very interesting field to, to research. If you look at the, one of the main ways of getting methane into something else is the oxidative coupling. It's in red here. You see like there was like a peak back to the 90s and then something is slowing down and then there's like a resurgence here, probably because of the shale gas in the US. And then another strategic, another reaction to, to convert methane is dehydroaromatization or non-oxidative reactions, which are also stepping up um, recently. And, um, it's very interesting because if you look to both science, I'm only restricting my research here for science and nature. These are all papers from, except this one, which is December 17. All of them are 18, 2018. So this is last year research, all of them. So there is an increasing interest in trying to convert methane into higher order carbon, or hydrocarbons or higher value products. Those here collected here, those are basically at room temperature and they are basically, most of them are based on the oxidation of methane using hydrogen peroxide, okay? So this is one of the strategies of our low temperature projects. We want electrocatalysis that is selective to hydrogen, so we can produce locally hydrogen peroxide inside this electrochemical reactors in order to control these reactions. But we, there is also, some examples of high temperature conversion that have been published. This is a 2016 paper, very interesting from Truss Norby. But last week, there was another one in Nature Communication and people were basically doing what he wanted to do. Coupling catalysis and electrochemistry in a high temperature SOFC-like reactor. And they have been able to produce ethylene, like we 
one. So we still have some ideas in order to get another nature, maybe in this next five years of project. But anyway, so this is to show you that things are, it's a hot topic, I would say. It's an interesting topic. So, and what are we doing? We're doing a lot of, we're trying to integrate people here, right? And uh, there is internal integration. We try to integrate our, our division between IPEN and FABC. And then within this spirit, we, we promoted last week, I uh, have to say, sort of like a preparation for this event here, but we made an internal workshop. And uh, it was very interesting. I was so, so happy and very surprised about what, what our researchers and, and students are producing at this point. And um, so what, what were the outcomes of this workshop? We, have, we had fruitful discussions and we could identify all the connections between our projects. We are very connected. Like for project 13 and 14 that I mentioned to you, uh, we have teams working on exactly the synthesis of nanoelectrocatalysis, but also in membrane reactors that, and then in the people from Project 14, they are putting those things together using different technologies, spray, deposition techniques, in order to get the devices, and also using the membranes and putting. And this is a very, very synergistic approach, in my opinion. So um, we, are, we are having an interesting, and we have a powerful um, way of progressing in this, in this scenario, in my opinion. So. Another point, those high temperature projects are also very connected. We have kind of similar problems to tackle. Uh, we are dealing with composite materials, porous materials, a lot of Syria being used. And uh, we have project 11, which is this photoelectrochemical one, which has a great link with the division of Professor Ana Flavia. So we came up with a very interesting, so those are topics for, for that we want to promote topics for cine thematic workshops. One of them that is very clear, I'm going to show you some results, but our colleagues, everybody is working a lot on those inoperandal techniques. So I think this is one topic that we should explore and put people together. Methane activation is a very interesting topic. So interesting that this week there was another paper in Science also about converting methane into something else. So the difficult thing is to get those radicals here and then put them together so you build up the molecules. So methane activation is a topic very important for us. Like I said, composite materials, porous structures. And as an outcome of this workshop, it's our first results and also um, some highlights that I'm going to give you here, but I already invite you all to have a deeper discussion with the authors, students, and researchers at this posters sessions that we have. I think that over there you're going to have the time to make the questions that you may have and discuss. So in project 10, we are already producing our samples. We, we need poros as pro, poros skeleton of uh, Syria doped, gadolina doped. So we want porosity in order to insert another material inside, which is going to be a molten carbonate in principle, which is going to be the phase conducting the carbonate ions. And uh, so people are already having this kind of microstructure that they, they, they need for the second step. And then also using those materials and a very interesting technique is flash sintering. It's for those uh, familiar with uh, ceramic processing. This is a few electric field assisted sintering of materials. We can um, um, produce very particular and special microstructures at relatively low temperature if you and push a little bit the process with some applied voltage electric field. So this group is one of the leading groups worldwide working with this, and they are having interesting microstructures using this kind of technique. Uh, we had a first satellite publication. The poster has been discussed over there during the session, but we are already oxidizing methanol. It's important, so we are using the same kind of catalytic system. Those are, those are um, uh, based on ruthenium, platinum, indium, and uh, it's basically one of the first satellite results that we have in CINI. A second one is a very important one, actually. This is an uh, anion conducting polymer um, membrane. Like I told you, we are on the way to develop carbonate conducting membranes, and this is, we already have a, a sort of a, um, a starting platform to work on those anions. We already have uh, hydroxyl conducting membranes, recently reported in the Journal of Chemistry A. 
And like I said, the inoperando techniques, we have our uh, infrared spectrometer. We've been some postdocs, Rodrigo is, is here, and he's going to show you, he's been developing our, our in-house made as well fuel cells, actually, that we can either choose to operate in a fuel cell mode or electrolyzed mode. So we spend energy or we, or we input energy, and then we can, we can basically trace, depending where you are, we can choose the voltage, so you can choose whatever, you can monitor the reactions happening at the different stages, at different applied potentials. This is a very interesting and powerful technique that has been used, and we're going to use for the same kind of reactions that we study in this project. And we are expanding this capacity for Raman spectrometry as well. You already have a, a small cell here for, for those kind of studies and the same apply. We can separate different regions of our device and we can monitor different products being uh, consumed or produced during those electrochemical reactions. And so I see where the posters, I hope that you're gonna have a, a lot of discussions there. I'm sure people are gonna, there is a lot of room of people discussing this inoperando techniques. Um, again, integrating, about integrating the center, CINI, We've been participating in different events, like Ana Flavia Toad. It was very, 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 it's a big pleasure for me to present uh, during these classes in Unicamp. It was an interesting experience. Uh, Professor Daniel from UFABC was invited by Professor Juarez in this uh, Division 4 workshop. That was our representative there. Um, but we are also concerned about expanding CINES outreach. Um, as you know, we, and people from methane to products, we also have a project with RCGI, the other engineering research center. And we think that's very important. We are focal point, we are a contact point between those two centers and we, and we think this is an important uh, role for us. We, there are some already outcomes of those interactions and one of them is that, uh, similarly to what FAPESP does here, NSF, National Science Foundation, does in the United States. They also have their engineering research centers, and we, and we, had the, we were very lucky to, to identify one engineering system uh, center, which is called CSTAR. It's based on Purdue University, and they are all, uh, they, and their main focus, it's the methane conversion as well, although more like alkane conversion to be precise. Uh, and it's very, very interesting. It's uh, a coordinator is a Brazilian guy named Fabio as well. But um, it was a very fruitful visit over there. We also uh, could identify many, many common ground for research, for collaboration. And the result of that is a project at FAPESP that is in, in re review right now, which we, we want to exchange people. And uh, they are very interested in our facilities here, the synchrotron. They are very uh, skillful with those in situ operando techniques as well. Um, we also have a good, good collaboration starting with people with a thematic project on the same subject, on methane conversion, from people Dr. Kawe Ribeiro from Embrapa. It's been very interesting and we set up a team that was doing some initial experiments in, in Germany this January. Professor Elisabeth was doing some research over there and uh, we look forward to see the results. And our next key activities, we have to, well, to receive all the equipments, put them to, to work, so we can have the whole operational system to run our experiments. And uh, we are high in postdocs and PhD, master's students, so we need uh, a lot of the hub uh, capacity to, to disseminate this information. We want to have the best people with us. This is a key problem. And most importantly, we are building up a center. We have a strong motivation to collaborate with the building up this new center, okay? So I have to thank all the people here, um, especially co-PIs and researchers from my division, all the students as well, postdocs. Thank you very much, very much. And I thank our sponsors as well, Fabes Pinchel, and you for the attention. Thank you very much.